To create our calendar table in Power BI, let's go to the Data View tab and we can see that we already have our data imported into Power BI. Let's click on Table Tools, click on New Table, and here in our formula bar, let's call this Calendar Table equals and type Calendar. And we want Calendar Auto. So let's select it from our IntelliSense. This function returns a single column of dates that are automatically generated from all the dates in our model. Let's insert a closed bracket and hit enter and we have our dates. Next, let's add a new column to our table and let's call this new column year equals and type the year function. This function requires a date as the input. Our date is here in the column called date. So let's type that column name and the IntelliSense brings up the date function, but we need the date column and not the function. It's here in the calendar table with the date column in square brackets. So let's select that and hit enter and we have all our years. Let's add a new column and call this month equals and we're going to use the format function. This function allows you to control the appearance of your data based on your desired format. Our first parameter will be our value, which is our dates in the date column from our calendar table, insert a comma, and the format that we want is the full month name, which is shown by the four Ms in double quotation marks. And let's insert the close bracket and hit enter, and we get our full month names. Now, if we remove one of the Ms and hit enter, we have our month names shortened. Next, let's add a new column and call it month number equals, and we're going to use the month function. And our parameter is the date column in our calendar table. And insert the close bracket and hit enter. And we have our month numbers. Next, let's add our quarters equals quarter and our parameter is the date column in our calendar table. Insert the close bracket and hit enter and we have our quarters for the period. In our formula bar, let's type Q after the equal sign and insert the double quotations and insert the ambassade sign and hit enter and we get our quarters in this format. Let's add a new column and let's call it D D M M Y Y, as I also want my date in the format of day, month, year. And we're going to use the format function for that. And our input will be our date column from our calendar table. Insert a comma and in double quotations, D D M M Y Y Y Y, and hit enter, and we get our date in this format. This calendar table is based on our fiscal period starting in January, but let's say our fiscal year started in October, so we would want Q1 to start in October and not January. All we need to do is go back to our date column that we created and in the brackets of our calendar auto function, insert a 9 as our fiscal year ends in September, which is month 9 and hit enter, and our calendar table updates to show October as our first month in our fiscal period. So when we're using calendar auto, always add the last month of the fiscal period as your parameter. If we don't, it defaults to December being our last month, and our calendar will start with January. But this hasn't updated our month number or quarter, as it still shows October as month 10, and that's in Q4. We want October to be month 1 and Q1. No problem. Let's add a new column and call it fiscal quarter equals, and let's type E date. This requires two arguments, the start date, which is basically the dates in our date column, which is here in our calendar table, so let's select that, comma, and the second argument is the number of months from the start date. Let's use one for now so you can see how this function works. 
The month that it returns is November, as this is one month away from October. And if we scroll down to November, December is returned as it's one month away from November. If we change this to two, then it correctly returns December, as it's two months away from October. And if we look at January as another check, March is returned as it's two months away from January. So this is how e-date works. So two months from October is December, and December by default is in quarter four. Now, if we wrap this in the quarter function, it now returns quarter four, which December falls in by default. So what we need to do is return January with our e-date function as January is in Q1 by default. So how do we do that? Well, January is nine months away from October. And remember, October is the start of our fiscal period in this example. So let's replace the two with minus nine and hit enter. And Q1 is returned, which is the correct fiscal quarter that October falls in. Let's scroll down to September so we can perform a quick check and it correctly shows as quarter four, as it's the last quarter of our fiscal period. Let's add Q in double quotation marks after the equal sign and the ambersand sign, and hit enter, so that we have the Q for quarter. Now let's copy this code, and add a new column, and paste it here. Let's call it fiscal month, and remove the Q and ambersand sign, and let's replace quarter with month and hit enter. And we have October showing as the first month in our fiscal period. Let's perform a quick check on March and it correctly shows as month six in our fiscal period. So the month function works in a similar way to the quarter function as it defaults to our calendar period being January to December. And all we need to do is a bit of simple math using the edate function to return the fiscal periods that we require. So now we have our calendar table, you can always add more columns if you need them. Now if we expand our date column here in our calendar table, we have these automatic date hierarchies. So every time that there is a date column in Power BI, it automatically creates these hierarchies. And if we check our sales data table and expand our date column, there's the automatic date hierarchy. Now, as we've created our own calendar table, we don't need this automatic date and time setting, so let's disable it. Click on File, Options and Settings, Options, and under Current File, click on Data Load, and here under Time Intelligence, uncheck Auto Date Time, and click OK. And now if we check our date columns, the automatic hierarchy has disappeared from both our tables. Next, ensure you're in your calendar table and under Table Tools, click on Mark as Date Table. This dialog box pops up and here's where we need to select the column to be used as the date. And notice that the column has to be a date type with unique values. Our date column in our calendar table has that. So let's select it from the drop down and click OK. And we get this icon next to our date column, which means that it has now been identified as a date column in an actual date table. Marking your date table as a date table is best practice, as it helps with your time intelligence functions. Now, if you've been dabbling in a bit of DAX and you find that your formula grays out whenever you use certain functions, like SUM in Power BI, or you would like to understand the difference between SUM and SUMX, as well as understand calculated columns and measures, then I highly recommend you watch this video here. It gives you a great introduction to DAX, and it will help you build your foundation to understanding this very powerful language.